We're back. Today might be the day that I upload a YouTube video. It's been almost a year since the last time you guys have seen me. I have a place now. But I'm checking out a red Miata with, let me make sure it's in focus, with 20,000 miles for 10K. It sounds too good to be true, which is probably the reason why it hasn't been purchased yet. But if it isn't, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to purchase it. I don't know. I feel like I entered a new chapter. And the reason why I wasn't filming before was because it was hard to push content because I didn't have car parts to put on. When you're not putting on a car part in your car channel, it's hard to film. But I made so many good friends that are doing so many cool builds that I'll be featuring those. And I've done a lot of fun stuff, so I'll just be more of like a vlog style series from here on out, which I like. I like that a lot more. This is the start of a new chapter. I just bought a 1990 Miata. This thing has 20,000 miles, mint interior. If you look at the lettering on the actual car, it's all so clean. Like you can't even tell that this has like been driven at all. And look at that mileage, 20,000 miles on a 32 year old car is insane. It has amazing, it has Mazda Miata Automotive Car of the Year, 1990 original sticker. It has American Miata Club sticker. The lettering on everything in here is just like pristine. I mean, I'm gonna pop the hood. <laughs> Look at the billet pedals replacement, super clean. Whoever owned this just tastefully modded this. It has a short throw shifter. Look at the distance. That's the entire distance, all it goes. So, okay. Jacob's not allowed to drive. This is the engine bay. Everything's mint. It feels incredible. So, I'm going to do a service on this soon because I don't know what the service history of it looked like. I mean, I have an idea, but I don't actually have everything. So, it has an original plastic cover for the spare wheel. It, insane uh, floor mats. It has the original Mazda, the Mazda way, and then the original manual, workshop manual. It has a clean cover for when you drive. Look at the lines in the back. They're completely untouched. Everything is looks like, it just has not been touched. Look at the paint of the rear. Everything has its original covers and original parts. It's insane. So, anyways, we're gonna be driving out of here. Look at the strut towers. Those look brand new. Anyways, we're gonna be leaving out of here. I'm gonna be washing this car up. The paint looks rough, but literally watch this. It is not actually there. None of this what looks like weathering on video or camera is actually there. We're gonna do a deep clean of this thing. This thing is gonna be so reflective, you should be able to see yourself off of it. It is an insane vehicle. Anyways, also that's not drilled into the front bumper. It's like a little thing that clips up and over. So I'm gonna be getting rid of that the moment we leave here. I just want to, for a second, talk about my plans for this car and what I'm going to be doing with it. It is going to be a super clean, almost show car level build, um, without being a show car, of course, uh, minor track uh, modifications to this car. The great part about a Miata versus a Mustang is Mustang can get coilovers for like six to seven hundred dollars. Miata's super high quality ones, like Raceland ones, Costs like 200 to 400 bucks. Everything on this car is cheaper, and on top of that, this is like the most clean spec version. At first, when I first opened up the car, you guys saw me pass by this book, but what I didn't realize that this was was this is the original satisfaction manual with signatures on the back from the people that was originally at the dealership. Everything's dated from 1989, the year before the car was sold, because if you're buying a 1990, it was sold in 89. So, going over this, it has all of the original papers at Parkview Auto Sales Incorporated on Washington Street. This is a New York car, it was never driven in the winter. Even has the original seller's information with their address on it, as well as the certificate of authenticity from that uh, auto company. Um, 
ownership and notification card as well as a maintenance little thing. Uh, never going to neglect changing your engine oil and filter on time. It has all the original papers. This is a really high, a really clean, low mileage Miata. And there's a lot I could do with this. I'm not going to tastefully unmodify it. I'm going to definitely make sure that it's OEM plus. Now, with all this being said, I'm excited to start posting YouTube videos. We're going into the winter again, which is the reason why I originally stopped posting videos last winter. Um, but this year is different. I have a new chapter in my life and I'm doing a lot of different things. And I think this car is going to help me take a step forward in the right direction. I'm going to be creating content year round. Um, trying to do a video once a week and holding myself that, to that. Like, um, posting consistently as much as possible, but mainly making sure that I'm creating a YouTube video once a week. I've been supporting on ARL, which if you guys don't know, I own a music repost channel of up and kind of artists that I like, um, stuff like that. Um, and a lot of the songs on there get copyrighted, so I'm not doing it for the money. I just like to do it because I feel like I have a tip of my finger on like the tip of culture, and especially music, uh, before a lot of people get famous. Um, so I want to curate that and host that. What are my plans with this Miata? Um, I want to wrap it, protect the original paint, um, while the original paint is in pretty good quality, um, having a wrap would also just add that layer of protection around the entire car, and I'd like to do something maybe color change on the line. Um, don't want to go wide body, the original body is very clean on damage, but just very aggressive, so I want to maybe add a little bit of camber, I've never had a camber to any of my cars, I'm not a super big camber person, but I think on the right build it looks really good, so... A little bit of camber, um, a very aggressive, uh, simple style wheel, um, and then making sure that I'm dialing in the fitment of this thing. The last thing I want to do is abuse and use this car and kind of ruin the pristineness that it has. I want to make sure that it's really high quality. Anything I do to it is not going to be junky mods. It's going to be definitely, definitely more tasteful and more authentic like JDM style mods than... Um, than ricer uh, considered mods. So one thing I know I need to do is remove this soft top. Um, I want to go hard top. It looks a lot better. Um, and on top of that, it makes I feel like cars it looks much better when there isn't that dr dramatic line or dr drastic line in the roof line where it just disappears. And that's what happens with convertible cars. And these didn't get offered in a hard top OEM, so I want to put a hard top on this. There's OEM hardtops out there, it's just super expensive, so I'd rather just go with an aftermarket one, the super high quality. I already have my eye on which one I would want to get for this car. Um, but it has like all original VIN numbers on everything, and like with little things like this, like you can just kind of tell the quality of this build, and I don't want to go away from that. I love this car. I'm excited to start making videos again, and on top of that, I want to hear what you guys want out of this build. What do you guys want to see from this build? What, what is things that you're looking to see, um, and then on top of that, um, what kind of content I should create around it. I'm never going to drive this thing in the winter. It is a pristine car. My Mustang, I've driven in three different winters now. It's been through its courses. I don't care. I'll keep driving that car in the winter. It's lasted me really well these last two years. Um, but this one is going to be definitely kept in pristine condition. Make sure you guys like and comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see on this build. This build is from me, but I want you guys to give your tasteful opinion on it. Um, let me know things you guys want to see, things you guys don't want to see about the car. You guys want to know about the car, stuff like that. There's a lot that's already been done to it, and tomorrow in the portion after this video or after this is going to be me working on it the next day. And I discover like a lot. A, this is a short throw shifter, but this thing has like springs on it. Um, I discovered what kind of springs those are, all the aftermarket modification, the NGK spark plugs, everything like that. I'm just going to quickly glance over the car and figure out what kind of aftermarket tasteful mods that have been done to this thing. And I'll show you guys along the way. Oh, thank God the original owner actually gave a shit about this car. I was coming down here and I was going to show you guys what kind of coilovers, what kind of sway bars, what kind of everything that's underneath this car. What is this car? What parts have been done to it? And then I noticed the wheels have this special little tool that needs to get off the center caps to make sure that you don't steal the wheels. There's a really old school styling of it, but I had to find this tool. Luckily, Cece was able to open up my trunk and get this tool out so I can actually see what is underneath. So now that I can take this off, we're gonna be jacking up the car. I'll be untorquing these lugs, putting down the wheel, and let's see if the coilovers, what they are, if I can lower them, what tools I'll need. Thank God the person that owned this before me actually gave a shit and kept things like that around. 
I would be fucked otherwise. All right, let's go get this car jacked up. After a recent discovery, I realized that this is just an aftermarket a lowering spring. It is not a coilover, which means I can adjust the dampness of the spring, but I cannot physically change the height of it. And it has aftermarket sway arms. I cannot tell what brand they are. I just know they're aftermarket. Same with end links. It looks really clean underneath here. If you look underneath the car, there's like no rust almost at all. Um, and everything about the brakes look like they've been recently redone. So super clean, good news. Um, that means there's no hidden damage. The firewall isn't rusting. Uh, even the bolts on this aftermarket little fender piece right there isn't rusting. So it's a really clean body, like really clean. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing in the front and a little bit here. I walked around the car and I've noticed a couple things. I want to make sure that everything, see that little space right there? I want to make sure everything matches on either side. So let's make sure there's still the same amount of space right there. Um, and I've started going over the part list I want for this car, and I'll review them with you in a later episode of the future of this build. But we may or may not have cracked the back little plastic. Good news is this is just a piece that you can separately replace. It like has a zipper that you can just go like this and unzip and then replace this piece right here. That accidentally cracked because of its age, but besides the age of this car, the age that has been put onto this car is very minimal. It has like original Mazda VIN uh, tags right there, the original sticker from the dealerships. It has the original books. So it's sold by Net. This is the dealer signature from the dealer in 315-1990. This is the VIN, cruise control, air conditioning number, um, all of the warranty parts with the original warranties and then the manual that was printed in 1989. Um, wow. This is insane. And then the workshop manual literally has everything to do with it. This is more detailed than like modern day instruction books. Because you had to like fix your own car. You you could bring it to a dealership and stuff, but like back then everyone just fixed their own shit. Talking about compression ratios, alternator, damn. Ready to jack off, toe down hooks. 